Um, my name is Eileen Leung, and I am from the San Francisco Department of the Environment. I have been there for a few years now, working on our toxics reduction programs, as well as our safe medicine disposal program. Um, I actually just moved to Galveston, Texas about a month ago, so I'm very excited to be here and very excited to hear y'all interested in this issue, and I'm trying to include y'all in my vocabulary. So it, it's slowly working. Um, <laughs> Um, so a little bit about the Department of the Environment. We are a department with the city and county of San Francisco, and we run many programs to support San Francisco's sustainability goals, um, everything from zero waste to planning for climate change. So today I'm going to give a quick overview of San Francisco's work on safe medicine disposal, including our pilot program, as well as our EPR ordinance that was passed in 2015. So I'm not gonna go talk too much about this, but of course we all know why we're here. There's obviously an environmental need to make sure that there's no extra pharmaceuticals entering our environment. And there's also a big public safety need. Um, and I don't know if it was mentioned before, but studies have shown that a lot of heroin abusers and kind of these more heavy um, drug abusers start off w abusing prescription drugs. And so there, there's a higher issue um, in terms of this, this drug opioid epidemic problem. So, and I apologize, I think some of the slides are a little messed up, but, um, so we know we aren't supposed to be flushing medicines, we know we aren't supposed to be putting them in trash. Um, in San Francisco, we have a three bin system for composting and recycling. So what are we supposed to do with them? Where do they go? In the past, San Francisco has done a lot of work to properly collect and dispose of medicines from people's cabinets and homes. Um, we've have, we have held one-day take-back events at pharmacies, um, among other things, such as collecting them at our HHW facility. Um, and while these efforts were really great, we had no sustainable funding source, and it was in no way convenient enough for our residents. So with a grant from the pharmaceutical industry, San Francisco launched its pilot program in April 2012. And the idea was to set up permanent drop-off locations where people can go take their drugs year-round without having to wait for a one-day event for the whole year. We recruited 13 independent pharmacies to host a medicine collection kiosk. So these pharmacies um, volunteered their space and their time to host these kiosks and we paid for the disposal costs. At the time, controlled substances could only be taken back at law enforcement agencies, so all 10 of San Francisco's police stations also took back medicine over the counter's evidence. Um, they decided at the time not to host kiosks, so um, people had to hand over their meds directly to the officer on duty which I'll talk about a little um, more later, but it, I think it was a barrier in our pilot program. Um, and the police handled all controlled substances through their normal procedures for handling um, narcotics. And to make sure that our program was well advertised and people knew about it, we passed an information ordinance. And this ordinance is separate from the ordinance that I'm gonna talk about in, in a little bit. Um, but basically, this information ordinance requires that all retail pharmacies advertise the locations where people can drop off their unwanted medicine. So during our pilot program, the pharmacies that were not participating in our, pharma in our pilot program had to advertise the pharmacies that were. In five years of operation, our pilot program collected over 87,000 pounds of medicine, which is a lot. And to put that into perspective, that's the weight of nine African elephants. Um, while very successful, our pilot program showed that most residents uh, preferred to drop off their medicines at pharmacies. So you'll see the, the blue line on top, ooh, sorry, um, is the amount collected by our pharmacies, and the orange line on the bottom is, is the amount collected by our police stations. And this isn't to say that medicine collection at police stations or sheriff's offices are, are not a good idea. I think there were a mix of barriers during our pilot program um, that contributed to this, including the fact that people had to go up to the counter and hand over their meds to an actual police officer versus just going to a pharmacy and putting it into a kiosk without having to talk to anybody. 
And I think in San Francisco, especially because it's very urban, I think there's a perception of going to a police station um, and, and people just don't want to go there and it may be different in other places. Overall, our, our pilot program proved that pharmacy-based collection works in San Francisco and it showed that San Francisco residents were willing to take the time to separate their meds from the rest of their waste, which is a big deal. And our police department has historically been participating in the DEA take back days. Um, we usually collect between 600 to over 700, 800 pounds of medicines per event. And last year we started advertising these DEA days on Nextdoor. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with Nextdoor, it's kind of like this online platform for neighborhoods um, where people can post questions or things about their neighborhood. And th those posts have been very successful. We've gotten a lot of good feedback from that. And it also allows us to promote the disposal options that are available to our residents year round. And keep in mind that these take back days were going on while our pilot program was in operation. So it shows the, um, the demand that people want, that people have for from proper medicine disposal. So in March of 2015, with the new DA rule in place and us not having fun funding to continue our pilot program long term, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors passed to the Safe Drug Disposal Stewardship Ordinance. And our ordinance requires the pharmaceutical industry to pay for and run a medicine take back program for San Francisco residents. And um, as Vivian explained earlier, it's based on an extended producer responsibility model, an EPR model, where manufacturers take responsibility of their products when they become a waste. And it's, it's um, very prevalent when their products are difficult or expensive to dispose of. Our ordinance requires manufacturers to submit a stewardship plan that describes how they will implement their take back program and they can either submit this plan themselves or they can submit it through a product stewardship organization. And with a, steward a product stewardship organization, manufacturers pay into a product stewardship organization or sometimes create a new organization to comply with this ordinance um, on their behalf. Our department serves as the oversight agency, so we review submitted stewardship plans, make sure that all ordinance requirements are being met, and make sure that implementation of our ordinance as well as their, the industry-funded take-back program is, is going well. Our ordinance also requires five drop-off locations per supervisorial district. With 11 districts in San Francisco, that's a minimum of 55 drop-off locations. And pharmacy participation in our ordinance is voluntary. Manufacturers are also required to promote their program. Um, they're required to set up a website as well as a phone number to educate residents on where they can find disposal options. If manufacturers are are complying through a product stewardship organization, usually the product stewardship organization will do this on their behalf. So San Francisco received one viable stewardship plan from an organization called Med Project, and they represent the majority of the pharmaceutical industry. We approved this plan in July 2016, so Med Project has been busy getting their program up and running. And there have been some challenges along the way, as you can imagine, um, such as a delayed start in their program, but we, are, we were able to overcome some of these hurdles and are still dealing with a few as we go. And I'm happy to say that the program has finally started. Med Project has set up 26 medicine drop-off locations in San Francisco so far. There are more on the way. Um, most of our pilot pharmacies have transitioned over to this new industry-funded program, and all 10 of San Francisco's police stations also have these kiosks in their, in their lobbies now, which is great. And since Med Project has not met the minimum 55 drop-off locations, they have also set up 33 mail-back distribution locations. So these are locations where residents can go pick up a free prepaid mail-back envelope, take it home, fill it up with their meds, and mail it in through um, the Postal Service for proper disposal. Um, a lot of these locations are at our public library branches. My project is, has also set up take back events to happen throughout 2017 to supplement that convenience standard that they haven't met yet. 
And here is just a visual comparison of the disposal options that were offered during our pilot program and the disposal options now. So um, on your left are, was the um, pilot program disposal options. And then um, on the right is kind of all the, all the options that we have now. So the red dots are medicine drop-off locations and the orange dots are um, the mailback distribution locations. So there are a lot more options available now, which we're really happy about. And lastly, the goal of our ordinance was to make sure that we had a long-term program that was sustainably funded by the pharmaceutical industry. And we are definitely on the right track. So the, our ordinance is working and we're very excited um, to see it working and to see how it's going to expand in the future. And thank you so much. And that is my uh, email address if you have any questions later on. Thank you.